Hello everybody, my name is Aaron Stark and I'm the food service director and chef here at Jefferson Healthcare out on the Olympic Peninsula of Washington State. And today I'd like to share with you some of my perspectives on the beauty of food and the art of methods cooking. Out here on the peninsula, what's the date? It's the 14th of September and we're harvesting this time of year. And got me thinking about what is the perfect vegetable? Sure, I've got my top 10 list of my favorite vegetables, but what I mean by the perfect vegetable is a vegetable that you could eat several parts of, say the leaves, the stems, and the roots, or the fruit, the stems, and the tuber. And I started thinking, what is that perfect vegetable? And the closest thing I could come to that perfect vegetable, which would be a vegetable that you could eat the seeds, the fruit, the flower, the leaves, the stem, the tuber, and the root. Wow, wouldn't that be amazing if we had a vegetable like that? But the closest thing I could come up with is the beet. The beet, you can eat the greens, the stem, and the root. In that vein of the perfect vegetable, today I want to talk about vegetable fruits. You might be saying, vegetable fruits, what? These are the fruits that we commonly see as vegetable fruits. They include eggplant, peppers, uh, squash, cucumbers, avocados, tomatoes, and these all contain the seed for the next generation of the plant. But today I want to take to, the, take to this and, and show you some methods about the fruits of vegetables. I'd like to start out with the tomato or tomato. Um, We've got several different varieties, types of tomatoes that occur. Um, we've got the Roma tomato, or plum tomato, or paste tomato, which is relatively low in moisture uh, as compared to a beefsteak tomato. Uh, so it's, it's preferred to make sauces with. But really, we've got tomatoes coming out of our ears right now, so you can make a sauce out of any old tomato you want. I want to share with you a classic technique of concasse. Concasse is a fine dice of a peeled tomato skin, in essence. But in order to do that, we need to blanch the tomato, arrest the cooking process in ice water, and then bring it back. If you'll notice the belly button here, we can either use a tomato shark, one of these little contraptions, to pull out the, the belly button of our tomato, but I prefer a paring knife, a serrated paring knife to be exact. And what it looks like is if I just put this paring knife, I hold my thumb about an inch from the tip, and I stick that paring knife into the belly button area of my tomato at an angle, and I just rotate my thumb around that stem, then I pull out the belly button or the green core of that tomato. And if you ever wondered, the tomato is related to the eggplant and the squash. So if you look at that green bit on the end of the tomato, it kind of looks like the same green bit that's on an on a eggplant. And they're from the Solanaceae family, which is kind of cool. All right, so here I have my tomato. I've taken the core out. And then I'm just going to very gently break through the skin with an X on top of the tomato. Here now I've got some boiling water. I'm just going to plunge that tomato into the boiling water. And I've got some ice water here to arrest the cooking process. And we're just going to boil that tomato or blanch that tomato just enough so it loosens up the skin. And it takes, takes a little while. It takes about anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute to get a nice loosen there. But that's going to pull that skin away from that tomato. And you can always Pull it out and check and see how far along you are. There's getting there. And then now pull it out here. And then hot, continues cooking. If something is hot, it's, it's continuing to cook. And we'll just plunge it into ice water to arrest that cooking process. And we'll let it, let it sit in there so make sure it, it, it cools it all down. And then once we have it to this point, if I just bring it here, and then you see how the skin of this tomato just wants to peel off nicely, like so. And I'll just take that off like that. Boop. 
Now there is the, the non-traditional way to do a concasse, and that is just to keep the skin on, which in my tenure I've grown up doing it that way the most. But here, if I just cut my tomato in half, put the flat sides down, cut it into quarters, and then grab one of the quarters, and this is a relatively large tomato, if I bring my knife to the edge of my cutting board where the handle is off the cutting board, then I can get an exact uh, parallel to my cutting board with my knife blade. If I do it with my handle over the cutting board, then my knuckles kind of get in the way, and I got some fat fingers. So here, being very gentle, I'll use a towel, a clean towel, and I'll just get that cut started just to pull out that seed bank. And I'll, I'll just slice that seed bank out of there. I'll pop that there. And then here I can see where I've got a nice plate of tomato that I can just come through here, give it a quarter inch slice, turn it, and then a nice dice, quarter inch dice of tomato concasse. Now that's traditional. Uh, Classic tomato concasse, uh, which is a fun trick. You can do the same thing using peaches um, to peel skin off peaches or some fruit. Um, but it's a really nice way to present uh, tomatoes. And certainly, uh, if you want to make the perfect tomato sauce, you're peeling the tomatoes to make your tomato sauce. So beautiful concasse there. So that's one of the things that I wanted to share with you about tomatoes. And I'm just going to clean up a little bit here. The next thing I want to go into, the next vegetable fruit I'd like to talk to you about is from the cucurbit family. And that is the squash. Summer squash, zucchini, patty pan squash, or sunburst squash. Um, they want to be picked tender before their skin really gets too tough. So nice size zucchini here. Um, and didn't have any crook neck in the, in the garden, but it did have some patty pan. So I'm gonna use that. Um, what I'd like to do when I'm messing with zucchini or squash, I just cut off the ends, pop those into my compost. And then if I'm careful, just do a long cut contouring that zucchini, pulling it in half and then flat sides down, contour cut again. So that one of the things that I look at when I eat a piece of zucchini that's been cooked is that the seed bank inside generally cooks faster than the meat and the skin of the zucchini. So it's kind of this oddball thing where you get, get some tooth on the, on the meat of the zucchini, but the seeds are always mushy. So what I like to do is to pull the seed bank out. Um, Again, I'm just going to use my, my towel here just as a little catcher's mitt so I don't, anytime I'm cutting towards my fingers, I like to make sure I've got a towel there just to save myself from cutting myself. And I'll just pull that seed bank out. And what I can do here is I have some options. Since cooking is one of those things where you can play, once you know the methods of cooking, you can kind of play around with things. And one of the areas you can play around with is, what do you do with all the guts to all the zucchini? Well, if you have enough of them, you can certainly roast them up with some curry and onion, make a curried squash bisque, be kind of nice. But one of the things I like to play with here is that you can really get creative with your cuts. Here I'm just doing a little bias cut just to show you um, the beauty in a bias cut, it makes more or less like a diamond shape. Um, in my recipe today, I'm doing a cross cut of about a half an inch. So there's that. Boom. And I'm just going to add those to my mixture. And then the patty pan is kind of special. Since I'm, I want the patty pan to cook at the same rate as the zucchini, I'm just going to cut the stems off of it. And a lot of times I'll just quarter these up or eighth them up. Um, but here I'm just going to cut them in half from pole to pole. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, along its equator. Um, 
And then I'm going to cut it down into half inch segments, half inch dies, like so. Boom. And then I'm just going to add these to my mixture of patty pan squash and zucchini. All right, so we've got tomatoes and we've got our squash and zucchini. The next thing I want to talk about is eggplant. Eggplant in the nightshade family, there's really two types, Japanese eggplant and your standard uh, aubergine. Again, it's got that, that same nightshade uh, green as you find on a tomato where it's a star shape. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pull the ends off so it sits up like that. And I don't know that I want to use this entire eggplant. I'm not that big of a fan of eggplant, to be quite honest with you. It tends to give me a bitter taste to it, uh, which you can tend to by adding salt, and it draws the, the bitterness out of an eggplant. But here I just want to take this tough skin off because I don't really like the skin. If I just start and I go in a clockwise manner, manner and I just use my knife to saw down the skin of the eggplant, like a so, and I keep on going in a clockwise manner, I can see what my blade is doing. If I went counterclockwise, it's hard to see what your blade is actually cutting. So here goes my eggplant. Boom. And that should get us. And here again, I want to cut these into a, a, a half inch dice as well. Those can go into my compost. Half inch dice coming right your way. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Now, if you're not careful, this eggplant will oxidize a little bit. It'll start to tarnish. So we'll be really quick about this. But kind of a nice spongy feel to it that meat of an eggplant. Okay, there's that. And I will just save that for our, our big dish of the evening. Boom. So there's eggplant. The next one I'd like to share with you is the sweet pepper. These are grown by my, my friends over at Red Dog Farm and a uh, really nice, sweet, uh, beautiful colored pepper. The thing that I'd like to do first is just cut around the top, and sometimes I can pull this off, but if I just cut around the top and I just lightly just twist it, sometimes you can pull the most of that seed bank out, but more times than not, you gotta reach down into the pepper, and then if I just tap it, all that seed will come out. I'll do the same thing here. Boom. Can use some of that. And there's that out of there. And just pop that seed down into my compost bin. And then I really like the idea of these peppers about getting a cross cut. So I'll do about a half inch cross cut on these sweet peppers. Boom. So in this dish, we're using tomatoes, squash, peppers, eggplant. So four fruits we're using, uh, vegetable fruits we're going to use in this recipe today. And nothing says summer love like a nice ratatouille, which is using all of these uh, to manifest a beautiful ratatouille. The one thing we will need is an onion. And so onions, here's where the green part is, here's where the roots are. I tend to cut off about a finger's width of my onion. It's just underneath that, just above that root is a kind of a woody area. Um, I could peel this back all my onion scraps, celery scraps, and, and carrot scraps, I can pop into a Ziploc bag and keep them in the freezer. When the Ziploc bag is full, I can just put it into water, bring it to a boil, let it simmer for 30 minutes, and I've got a wonderful veggie stock. 
But here goes, I'm just going to now cut this onion from pole to pole and peel off the first layer of that, like so. And it kind of gives me this little rainbow. It's an onion rainbow. So clean up a tad here. There's my onion rainbow, and I can use that to my advantage when I'm doing a dice of onion. And that goes like this. If I work to where my body likes to cut things, instead of being all mechanical and angular like this, if I, if I use the mechanics of my body, it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable. I'm always going to wield my knife where it is balanced, where it, it's, it's nice to hold my knife. When I hold my knife, I'm just balancing it and then pinching it and letting my hand fall back. Remember, whenever you're using a knife, that you're actually using it as if it were a micro saw. So I'm actually pulling, dropping the heel, or pushing, dropping the heel anytime I'm cutting something. And anytime my knife gets out of true or it starts to feel dull, I can always um, bring on the steel to, to bring it back into true. Uh, so here, I just want to get a nice, probably about a half inch dice of onion happening. There's a, feel some crispiness on that layer. So two layers in on that onion. So if I just hold this finger, like I love my fingers, and I hold that onion, and I come through half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, and then I bring that onion again to the edge of my cutting board, bring out my clean towel as a kind of protectant of my finger, and I use my knife like a little saw and go in and do some cuts, half inch, half inch, half inch. And then I bring the onion back to the middle of my cutting board again, where it's fun to cut, and I cut through. That gives me a nice half inch dice of onion. And some of these might not go all the way through. The bits at the end, again, can go into that Ziploc bag in the freezer for some other day to make a nice veggie stock. So again, we'll just get a nice dice of this onion, half an inch. And boom. And being very careful, I can use my knife like a little trowel just to scoop that onion up off the cutting board. All right, so I've got my onion, I've got my squash, I've got my tomatoes, which are three different types of tomatoes. There's actually beefsteak, Roma, and little sun gold tomatoes. I've got my sweet peppers, um, I've got my eggplant, I've got some fine chopped garlic, and I've got some basil, a chefanada basil. And this is the last thing that I'm going to do with my really sharp knife. I'm going to come here, and I'm just going to pick off the leaves right here of my fresh basil out of the herb garden. And I think I just want to keep that top for something special in the end. And what I'm going to do is if I just deck out these leaves, stack them gently, not to, not to bruise them so I don't want to pinch them too hard. And again, that knife, if I, if I swing that blade of that knife, it gives me a beautiful cross cut, which is referred to as a chefanade of basil. Again, being gentle, just pick that up and pop it in there. All right. So, methods cooking. If you know a method of how to cook something, then recipes are uh, a guideline. Um, I like methods cooking. My favorite time to cook is like the last day of a ski trip when the refrigerator is full of things you just got to put, put to a use. That's when methods come into play. Today I want to show you the methods of cooking a ratatouille. So here we go. 
Boom. I'll bring out a large satois, which is uh, the sides of my satois are straight. A satous is more like a saute pan. And I'll put it on a high heat. I've got a scale here. And today I want to scale out my recipe. So I'm a conjurer recipe today because I'm a recipe conjurer. I'm a recipe writer, not a recipe reader. So I'm just going to zero out my bowl here. And the first thing I want to saute off is going to be get my squash started. And I've got 21 ounces of squash. I've got five ounces of eggplant. I've got 11 ounces of onion. I've got 22 ounces of tomato. I've got nine ounces of sweet peppers. And I've got a half an ounce of fresh chefinata basil. So here we go. The methods of my ratatouille. Oils. I've got an olive oil that we're going to use a little later and I've got an organic canola oil right here. Organic canola oil is a high temperature oil. It's from the uh, rapeseed which is a mustard seed and it's high temperature. So I'm just going to add about a tablespoon and a half of canola oil to my saute. And the idea is that I really want to saute these things. So in, in French, to saute something means to jump. So I want that pan to be wisps of smoke. I'll notice that that oil is going to get um, viscous. It's going to, it's going to become more fluid um, than a cold oil. And then I'm going to bring my onions over too. So I'm going to get this nice and hot. Get that oil moving around. Yes. So um, while I'm waiting for my oil to heat, um, I've got my own feelings about food. I feel like cooking is an art form. To be a culinarian is more like an artist. And I believe that Cooking uses all the senses in its true form. It uses that sense of taste, smell, sight. Uh, you can hear it uh, and, and, and you can actually feel it. If you think about, um, oh, I, I always like to talk about the fajitas at a Mexican restaurant because when you order fajitas at a Mexican restaurant, the first sense that goes off is you hear it. The doors flap open and it's sizzling. And that conjures you to want to look. And then you can see them coming across the dining room. And as they get close to you, you can kind of smell them. And then they put them down in front of you. You put them in the tortilla. And you put them up to your mouth. And your lips hit them. So you're feeling them. And a split second later, you're tasting them. Ah! No. Uh, that's the way I feel about food. So it's a, it's a sensual experience. So my oil is pretty hot. And if we were to close our eyes right now, I bet we could hear me pop these, these squash into it. Ooh, the sizzle. A lot of people, when they put something in the pan, their first instinct is to go to start shaking the pan. I'd like to encourage you not to do that, just to let it be for a second. Just to let it set in with a nice saute. And you can feel it. I'm going to add my eggplant. And my onion. And we're just going to be patient and let this just beautifully saute down.
I'm cooking on an induction burner, which transfers heat through magnets in the, in the base here through uh, stainless steel that you can actually, that's magnetized. So it's kind of a fun thing. So we're live streaming on YouTube, my first time doing this. Generally, I'm doing this in front of like 30, 40 people and it's really fun. So I want to encourage anybody who's watching, all two of you, uh, to, to send, to send, there's more than two, what? To send in questions. I'll answer to the best of my knowledge. And I really like sharing food with people. Ooh, and this recording will be up on the website tomorrow. So, summer ratatouille on the website. So, we're just going to be patient. Don't try and rush it. It's going to take a little while. Oh, we got plenty of time. So, the patty pan squash and zucchini I got from Red Dog Farm. Uh, onions came... Uh, out of the backyard and garlic came from out of the backyard basil came from our herb garden uh, half the tomatoes came from out of my backyard and the sweet peppers came from Red Dog Farm too so this is a local yokel uh, kind of feels good to, it's, uh, it's the terroir of the Olympic Peninsula done in ratatouille alright so I'm just going to Saute that down. So I want that squash to kind of squash. I want the onions to be translucent. I want the squash to be halfway cooked, the eggplant to be halfway cooked. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it all out and start another cooking process and then add it back, if you'll let me do that. It's going to be fun, I promise. All right, I feel that I'm getting to that place. So, I'm just gonna pull my squash and my eggplant and my onion out of my pan, just pop it into this vessel. I can do this without spilling it all over the place. But it's kind of nice start one thing and go into another and this I it feels like that I can control the consistency of my ratatouille a little bit more if I do this in two stages all right okay now whereas I use canola oil to saute my vegetables in this first motion now I want to have a cool pan, relatively, and I want to hit it with about three tablespoons of olive oil. Yeah, and then here I'm going to add about a tablespoon and a half of fresh chopped garlic, cold olive oil, cold garlic, relatively, yeah, cool pan, hot cooking surface, I'll enter it back into play and I'll have my peppers and my tomatoes raring to go. So the thing we're going to look for here is that I can spread this garlic out and I'll see that garlic start to bubble and that's just the moisture escaping in that hot oil that that olive oil is starting to heat up. Olive oil is not very good to saute in because it's got a relatively low smoke point or, or it, it, it starts to burn uh, rather quickly at a low, low temperature. But in this, where I'm not actually sauteing, I'm just 
kind of heating my garlic up in this oil, it works out pretty well. Um, and I want to get that garlic a nice golden brown color. And I will be vigilant about that. I'll keep moving around the pan. It'll collect a fond in the bottom of the pan towards the center of the pan. And I can just scrape that around and keep that garlic moving around. But once that garlic is that perfect golden color that I want it, I need to stop the cooking process. And the way that I'm going to do that is that I'm going to introduce cold vegetables, like those cold tomatoes and cold peppers to my pan. They will arrest that cooking process about the same as uh, when I blanched my tomato earlier and put it, plunged it into the ice water. Kind of the same thing. Arresting the cooking process. Of course, like the number one rule in cooking, if it's hot, it's still cooking. So that's a, that was an aha moment for me as a young chef. So there we have that. Now let's see if we can hear it again. That is that pan cooling down ever so quickly. Here I'm going to add my peppers to it as well. And I'm just going to stir it up. And I really want that tomato to cook down to kind of make the base of my sauce for my ratatouille. And those peppers will cook down as well. Keeping it stirred up, being vigilant. So I've got the two parts, my zucchini and patty pan squash, my eggplant and my onions that I sauteed up in canola oil, high temp. Then I pulled everything out, put it into a vessel, and then in a cold pan started cold garlic, cold olive oil until that garlic started to sizzle and turn golden brown. And then I arrested that cooking process by adding my tomatoes and my peppers to the pan. Oh, this is so fun. Yeah? Cool. I've got my live studio audience here. They're kind of heckling me. You can't see that, but they are. Oh, yeah. It's like alchemy, turning veggies into a beautiful potage. Oh, it is so smelly. Um, kind of think about that movie Ratatouille, kind of one of my favorite cartoon movies where the guy has that, like, he's, he's like sitting down, he tries the ratatouille for the first time and it like sends him right back to his childhood. Send us some, send us uh, some, if you've got an experience like that of a food thing that reminds you of your childhood, send us. I'd like to hear about it. Mine was carambola. You know what carambola is? Anybody? No. Star fruit. So I grew up, I was born in the state of Florida, and we used to have a carambola plant, tree, bush, whatever it is. And my parents used to feed me carambola. I didn't know it. When I was like 18, started in a kitchen, and the chef's cook slicing up this carambola to put on a fruit display. And he called it star fruit. And he says, here, try this. And I tried it, and I was like floored because I knew that I had had it before. And sure enough, when I asked my mom, she was like, yeah, he used to eat the mess out of that stuff all the time. So I'll notice my tomatoes are starting to weep down starting to juice out and my peppers are starting to get a little bit soft and there'll be a distinct point when I'll say okay it's time to add the goods back into my sauce so I'm just gonna give it a little bit longer oh we're doing well huh yeah so if you join us next week next week we're gonna be talking about flowers it's gonna be a fun one All right, I think we're there. 
I'm going to add my squash, eggplant, onion to my mixture of garlic, olive oil, tomatoes, and peppers, shall we? Oh yeah. Give it a nice stir. Sometimes I like using a smaller spoon. If you stick your pinky out, it makes you look like you know what you're doing. Okay. So now's the time we should start thinking about the consistency of it. Like how's it going to lie on the plate? And what we want it to taste like. So when I talk about seasoning, there are a couple of, of sides to seasoning. We can season for salt and pepper. That's what most people think about. We can add spices to this. We can certainly add um, uh, different herbs other than basil. We could add thyme to it. Some people may like to do sage. Um, but what I want to focus on is the acidity of this dish. Now, if we think about the vegetables that are here, where are we getting acidity from is the tomatoes. Where are we getting sweetness from? We're getting sweetness from the peppers and the onions. Uh, the squash is going to give us this kind of herbaceousness, more of a texture than anything. Uh, the eggplant, certainly, maybe a little bitterness, but again, a texture thing. Um, but there's a way that we can play with the acidity levels. And if we think about this as a dish that stands alone, like, what are we going to eat tonight? Oh, we're going to eat peninsula ratatouille tonight, but nothing else. Then we want to we make sure that the acidity levels are perfect. And what I mean by that is this. The next time you chug a lug a quart of heavy cream, I want you to close your eyes and see a big fat chef. Yeah, cool. Boop, boop, boop. Heavy cream fat chef. And he's over here. The next time you do a tropical squeeze of a lemon, I want you to close your eyes and see a really skinny chef over here. So when I try a little bit of my ratatouille right now, is it going to be fat or is it going to be thin? They're pretty them. And this is before me seasoning anything. So how can I impart fat to counterbalance any acidity there? Well, I could add olive oil to it, which we already have some olive oil. But I always know that if I'm doing ratatouille, I'm going to finish it out with a little Parmesan cheese. That will add an umaminess to it, a nice savory flavor to it, but also counteract that acidity. It'll also play with my sodium content. So I kind of want to be gentle when I'm seasoning with my kosher salt. I want to take into consideration that I'm going to put something salty in, I'm going to finish it up with something salty, so if anything, I want to undersalt on that side until I get my cheese in there, and then I can really, really hone in on things. All right. Those rings of peppers are catching my spoon. Kind of sassy. All right. So here goes my fresh basil, which I'm going to wait just a second because I want it to, to really hit it. And when I hit that, this room will just take on this whole different smell. You ready for it, ladies? Here it goes. Basil in chefonade of basil. Boom. Just stir that in ever so nicely. Ooh, smells like basil. Ooh, it's starting to look really sassy. All right, I've got some fresh ground black pepper here. It was done in a spice grinder because I don't like carpal tunnel. Sitting there for half a minute doing that is not good for this. So it's a nice fine ground. I'll take a three-fingered pinch and I'll just season it to taste. 
I kind of like a little bit heavy on the black pepper in my ratatouille. So about one and a half, three finger pinches there. Give that a little stirring up. And again, the number one rule in seasoning is that you can always add more. You can't take it away. So be gentle. So I'm just going to add maybe one and a half, three finger pinches of kosher salt. Really stir it in nicely. Oh yeah. Kind of stirring and folding. It's looking really colorful here. The colors of summer. And then I'll just grab a spoon here and try it, see where I am. So I'm going to taste for the acidity and I'm going to taste for the seasoning. Mmm. Mmm. A little bit more salt. Feeling that. Keeping this stirred up. Wow. And the longer I let this go, the drier it will become. And since I like um, shiny things, having that initial blast of olive oil in the beginning has made this a pretty shiny dish, so I kind of like that. So how about I plate it up? Does that feel good? Nice plate here. And a spoon. Oh, so nice. And here I can cherry pick all the colors and make them look beautiful. So I'm plating this ratatouille to eat by itself. Here's a little Parmesan cheese over the top. A nice, wonderful vegetarian dish. I'll just garnish it with a little bit of basil. And then if I'm really feeling fun, I can just hit it as that juice comes out. I can just impart a little bit of olive oil around my plate and over the top. And it makes a beautiful summertime dish. Um, I have a lot of fun with this dish, serving it over uh, polenta. Uh, have a lot of, uh, if I take polenta and cook it and seize it with cheese, and then cool it down and cut it into cakes and then pan sear it, and then serve this over layers of that, it's just absolutely beautiful. But I've made a big batch of this. Um, it can be reheated. You can add it to pasta uh, to make a nice pasta sauce. I've even gone so far as to make bruschetta uh, with it on the top. And uh, pizza, this on pizza is fantastic. So I give you Olympic Peninsula summertime ratatouille. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Join us next week, same time. And we'll do some fun stuff with food. Do we have any questions? Oh, next week, so in the, the idea of the perfect plant, you know, the plant that you can eat the seeds and the fruit and the flower and the leaves and the stem and the tubers and the roots, we're the first in a six-week series tonight. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about flowers of, of vegetables, and we're going to do some exciting things with squash blossoms and cauliflower. Sweet. Do we have any questions? Don't to class. Ah! How many people are out there? Like 20? No way. Really? Wow. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. 
It feels really lonely in this cafe without you guys on a daily basis. I'm just going to tell you that. Cool.